Hey guys, welcome to my home. I had the pleasure of interviewing Melissa Avanesian. Mel Avon, as she's more popularly known, is the founder of the 20,000 member strong Facebook group, Powerlifting Women. She's also an online coach, a home gym owner, a USPA referee, the list goes on, college professor. So we talk about all those things as well as how she's adjusting her services to be able to better serve her clients during this time of the coronavirus quarantine, plus an awesome opportunity that you guys will hear at the end of the interview for women to compete in an online powerlifting meet. So check all that out right after this. Mel, it is so good to see you again. How you doing? I'm doing well. How about yourself? I'm, I'm doing great. I appreciate you carving out some time here in this unusual situation to talk to me. Uh, you mentioned you had a full busy schedule of uh <laughs> are you catching up on netflix or what are you doing um so i actually this was an unexpected break from everything that's been going on um it's unfortunate in a lot of ways but i've been trying to look at the bright side of things and just kind of catch up on my work that has been so far behind wow. and just get ahead on things that i needed to work on because during the school semester i just i don't have time to work on my business and so now i'm just trying to you know iron some things out so that when things hopefully pick back up in april um i'll have get gotten all that stuff out of the way so Okay. Well, before yeah. we uh, dive into all that, because I just was listening to you on the uh, Female Powerlifting Podcast, and mm -hmm. uh, that's when I discovered that you are a professor. So go ahead and tell the viewers who may not be familiar with you a little bit about yourself and why you're so awesome. Um, so I, uh, am a powerlifting coach mostly my, my business is in, you know, coaching others. I started out as a personal trainer and kind of, um, went more into coaching athletes when I started becoming more competitive in powerlifting myself. Um, so I'm a USPA coach and ref. And so when I was doing my university classes for my master's in exercise science, um, I became a grad assistant and, um, I really enjoyed working with the students, um, at university. And so they allowed me to teach my own classes. So I teach a concepts of fitness class, which is an all encompassing course for a cardio, muscular strength, endurance, um, nutrition, body composition, everything. And the other course is a barbell course. So it's the big three squat bench deadlift. And I got to teach that because of my experience teaching that for my work. So it's kind of a new thing that they launched and um, it's doing pretty well so far. So I'm excited for it. That's awesome. It's kind of like um, the late Paul Kelso, who I had the privilege of, uh, I believe I was the last person to interview him. And uh, if people don't recognize the name, he wrote the book Powerlifting Basics. He was a correspondent for um, Powerlifting USA magazine. And he was, uh, uh, he was a uh, high school teacher and he taught power and then he also started a powerlifting club. And so whenever mm -hmm. I see people who are doing something like what you're doing or what Paul did, it's like it's automatically like you've got a built in, you know, however long a semester is, you've got a research study group that you can use for your, I don't know, you like your theories, your ideas, like, hey, I want to test this out. Because although you're a coach, you're getting, you know, you get feedback from people pretty much through video. Whereas with your students, mm -hmm. you get to see them real time, like, okay, is this working, you know, or how does this work, especially with someone who's not as um, trained you know, uh, in, in the lifts or whatever. Uh, so it's kind of unique in the way that the big three that we teach, it's a physical activity course, but we are teaching them how to teach other people. So they could pull oh, someone wow. um, out of the gym and say, this is how you perform a squat properly or do a technique analysis. So it's more of a technical class than actually trying to get super strong because it's such a short class. The activity course is only seven weeks long. By the time you do a pre-test and a post-test, that gives you what five weeks in between. Yeah. So teaching them how to do it and uh, having them do all the other activities for the course um it doesn't give us enough time to actually s they do see progress because uh, they're yeah. just starting out um but that's that's a good idea i can probably pitch for them to increase the duration or the you know how long the semester is from seven weeks to 14 weeks like traditional yeah and maybe kind of do some experiments you know for our own gain for the newbies so yeah, I mean, because Bill Starr also, who was Mark Ripito's coach, was a strength coach in college and as well as a teacher. But 
I remember he mentioned that he didn't have any planned deloads because he said that you get your deloads simply by just following the just don't exercise when you go on vacation you know if you're a college student he said just whenever you go on vacation just take that time off and let that be your deload and um he said that he noticed uh, uh quite a lot of pro progress among the people he coached he primarily coached football players he wrote that mm -hmm. book uh the strongest shall, shall survive um and so that was that's another reason why i think it's with proper instruction, I think the school system is actually one of the best places to teach physical education, like real physical education, so that people are able to go out into the world and then, even if they don't plan on being coaches or anything like that, they're able to pass this information on to their kids um, and then use oh, it themselves. Yeah, yeah. yeah for sure. And so um, we are right in the middle of, well, hopefully it's the middle and not just the beginning of the COVID-19 quarantine. And I think it's ironic because you had just, um, you had just uh, found, gotten like some stuff in from rep. If I can find it, there you go. Yeah, you guys uh, had just gotten some stuff from rep and you had just finished setting up your home gym. I'm, I'm watching the video, which I assume is sped up unless you really are that fast. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm watching this video here of you guys setting up the, your home gym and then not long after that, we get the news that, you know, we have a quarantine. So did you have a crystal ball? How did you how did you know that you were going to need a home gym? So that you're also ahead of the curve, because now I bet you everybody <laughs> is ordering home gym equipment right now. Yeah, home gym equipment is sold out across the board. People are trying to get their hands on equipment and they're not able to, and it's crazy. Um, so I, we had a little bit of equipment here. We had a few barbells and plates and stuff like that, but, um, and I wasn't planning to get to build a home gym here because I'm going to school out here. I was planning to move back to California where I do have my own home gym set up. And so I was like, well, do I want to really drop money on yeah. another home gym? And um, and so what happened was, so Brian is the equipment guy. And so he was like, Hey, have you heard of rep fitness? And I, um, and I was like, Oh no, I haven't really heard about them. And so he talked to me a little bit about that. I was like, Oh, I'm so busy. I kind of, uh, threw it off and he ended up connecting with one of the, the salespeople at rep fitness, um, Katie and Katie told Katie a little bit about me and she got really excited. She knows about the Facebook page, powerlifting women. And so, um, she was excited to start working with me. And so she reached out and said, Hey, can we, can we provide a sponsorship for your home gym? Um, and you know, I, um, in between that time, cause this was back and forth over several weeks. Okay. Uh, I, I said, let's, let's try out some of their equipment. And so we bought some secondhand rep fitness stuff and I, I loved it. I thought it was great quality. And so, um, so I was like, yeah, of course I, I'd, I'd be happy with the sponsorship. So, um, they, you know, we kind of ironed that out. They sent over the stuff and then, you know, all this happened. I was like, that timing couldn't have been more you know coincidental but yeah rep has good stuff yeah. yeah um i've got oh, yeah. i've got a set of i've got a cat one of the kettlebells uh i've got uh and a set of bumpers uh from them i'll definitely be ordering mm -hmm. some more stuff because like as you said I, the quality is there um for me mm -hmm. i've been training from home since 2000 yeah since 2000 and i've seen so many gadgets come and go and and then even some equipment that you buy that you might get say like play against sports or something like that isn't necessarily designed mm -hmm. to hold up long term right it was back then it was designed for the home gym so they assume okay it's only going to be touched a few times and i don't know if they thought you know that um eventually you're going to move on to a commercial gym or whatever so it didn't have to be that durable but as i said like mm -hmm. you know imagine so this is 2020 i've been doing it since 2000 so that's 20 years of using something at least three, four mm -hmm. days a week, right? So the wear and tear on anything like that is gonna pile up. And so for me, it's actually better to buy commercial quality equipment that's designed for a lot of hands to touch it all day long because I know I'm going to have this for a long time, like the old York stuff. You wanna buy something that you can pass on to your grandkids, you know? Um, so I, I really like yeah. the rep stuff. Um, that, Like I said, the, the big thing for me is I have the kettlebell. I have the kettlebell and I noticed that it's really comfortable in my hand not doing a commercial for rep but it just it feels comfortable in my hand it's uh 
you know, sometimes that you have paint flaking off and the powder coat is weird, but yeah, I'm pretty cool with that. Yeah. So I haven't, I don't have any of their kettlebells, but I'll, I'll look into that. Uh, Brian loves kettlebells. So definitely. Uh, but, um, if you want to try something, I was very surprised by their deep neural power bar. Okay. I wasn't planning to get another power bar, but, um, Katie highly recommended it. She said, we want to know what you think. And I used it for squats and it was, it was good. It was, so I do thumb over grip okay. and I, um, I just, put my palm on it and I felt it like after a while I was like man this neural is aggressive and but it, it was it was really good for my squat so I, I highly recommend that if you're looking for a power bar I was gonna ask you like do you prefer it's got deep neural so do you prefer it for squats or deadlifts squats I don't like a really aggressive neural for deadlifts because I do hook grip yeah I do hook also um, yeah yeah so um so I don't I use a um Texas deadlift bar okay. Okay. For my deadlifts, yeah, I can't handle. I'm I'm weeks off when it comes to gripping really heavily knurled bars. I can't do it. Well, I mean, you know, I think the thing with knurling though is, it's there to help you hold the bar, right? So mm -hmm. if you train your grip, so that you don't need an aggressive knurl to help you hold onto the bar, then you don't need. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, you. To me, you shouldn't get it because it's there. You get it because you need it, and. So you got to find the thing that uh, that, yeah. that works best for you, especially since it's, again, your home gym. Yeah, I wrap, I'll literally wrap my thumb around the smooth part and I'll wrap my fingers around the knurled part because I just, the knurling is yeah. just, it kills my thumb, so. Yeah, and then yeah. in competition too, if you think about it, um, you know, having your grip like tear, having a callus tear in, in competition is one of the big reasons why people miss a deadlift. Like they had it, then their callus tears, and so mm -hmm. let's say it's on their second attempt, and now they, you know, they got to figure out if they can even try the third or you know or whatever, right? Um, uh, so yeah, I'm not a huge fan of super super aggressive knurling for a deadlift bar either. Yeah. But you mentioned um, it's women powerlifting, right? Or is it powerlifting women? The Facebook group. Powerlifting women Facebook group. Yeah. All right. So I'm not a member for obvious reasons. If they're not, <laughs> I'll talk deeper. But um, <laughs> but uh, that led me to think about the fact that you coach a fair amount of home gym owners uh, through team powerlifting um, or a team athletics. Uh, how how has that um, has it been affected by the quarantine? Because yeah, obviously they're still you know they're at home, but you know some some people don't necessarily just train only at home they have they may own a home gym but they may train okay i do all my deadlifts at home and i squat somewhere else how have you had to adjust your coaching for your uh so that you can continue to serve your clients so i think what's affecting home gym owners the most is being sent home um from work and their families being sent home from work so now they might work out at home but they have all these other extra responsibilities at the house. If they have kids, they might have to homeschool their kids. If they have, you know, a spouse, the spouse is going to be home and driving them nuts like they all do. Um, and so those are the challenges that the home gym um, folks are dealing with is the other stuff from uh, having, having to be quarantined. But what's affecting people the most is not having equipment. Yeah. And so I came out with a, a equipment free. So I, I made a template. It's a 12 week template. And um, I built it so that if you do have some equipment, you can modify it. So it has a zero equipment a workout plan and then with modifications if you do have trx resistance bands um, kettlebells whatever you have you can use as your resistance or add it as your resistance to the training program and i gave those programs out to fr for free to my clients and then um, i gave it out as a discount to the powerlifting women's page and if you want for your viewers we can do a discount if they need a home oh that'd be awesome um, yeah yeah we can we can make something for you guys too um, sure so that people can you know have a template for a lot cheaper than they would pay normally that is a uh, good deal all... guys i'm telling you now because mel yeah. is a top-notch coach uh she's a, you're also a uspa referee so you're coaching people from the standpoint of someone who has to know the rules as they apply in competition so you guys i've got this pulled up on the screen right now and if we can uh mm -hmm. get that we'll um the discount code will put the link for that in the description for this video so you guys can check it out as well 
Yeah, for sure. And um, so basically it's just been damage control for everybody. Like we've been, I've been just trying to have people not panic and understand that, um, you know, you could still work out at home and get a good workout. I mean, there's a lot of people, we are very privileged to be able to have all this fancy equipment in our houses. And a lot of people who uh, work out in other countries and other uh, places that aren't pr as privileged, they don't have any equipment to work with. I had um, one of my clients, not, not to say she's uh, privileged or not, but she works on a farm and oh, she wow. says, I don't have equipment. And so she, I said, what do you have? She said, I have stones. Oh, wow. You know, I have, nice. Let's say hay bales or whatever. And so you can modify your training program with just what you have. So she does like goblet squats with stones and you can just weigh whatever the item, uh, you can hold the item in your hand, weigh it while you're on a scale and you can figure out the weight of it, do progressions that way you can do, you know, push ups. There's so many variations of things you can do. And sometimes your body needs a break anyway. So mm. take a break, work on plyometrics, you know, go outside, go for a run, dreaded runs, but, um, whatever it is that you want to do get some blood flowing hang out with your family spend some time with the people you love you know in quarantine but um you know practice your cooking skills whatever whatever it is you need to do i've been doing home projects i've been patching up um i don't we don't even own this house but i've been patching up the garage there's holes in the garage where people like nailed stuff yeah. previously i've been patching that up i would never do that otherwise unless i was on quarantine so it's like you have the time to work on stuff at home yeah. so just chill out relax and just get things done you know That's all we yeah. Can do. yeah and there's um there's a couple of things that i say about the what uh, everything you just said so first thing is i actually love the fact that um my kids are around and i, I don't just mean my son who trains with me you know people if they see uh, my training videos you sometimes see my son walking by or you'll see him training at the same time you see me training so I'm, I'm accustomed to that. Well, we've got four boys and we've got one still in the home and he's, um, and so all of my kids train with me, but I also have a four year old little girl. And so I love the fact that she's around though, because although she does come up and distract me, I mean, like she'll, there's nothing for me to be at the beginning of a squat and she'll come up and say, daddy, listen to this song or something like that. Right. <laughs> and so it's a good opportunity as a parent to either say, wait, Hold on a second. It's daddy's turn because that's how we do it. We say it's daddy's turn because she's got to learn to take turns anyway because she's going to be going to school next year, uh, theoretically. <laughs> um, and so on the one hand, it's, good, it's a good time to teach her some patience. But also, and you know this from being in meets, something always goes wrong at a meet. Okay. Whether it's... Uh, Something goes wrong, you got your knee wraps already on, then the lifter ahead of you, something happens, and now you've got your knee wraps on for too long. Or something goes wrong with they misload your attempt. Or just any kind of anything could happen. And I find that lifters who who have a perfect meat prep, nothing ever goes wrong during meat prep, are not mentally prepared for the inevitable distractions that occur at a meet. Um, in the last Olympic Games, uh, I read that Michael Phelps's coach would actually do things on purpose to screw with his head and then make him practice anyway. So that he, for example, he uh, misplaced his, he took his cell phone and hid it so that he wouldn't know where the cell phone was. So he's like looking for his cell phone and, you know, I want to hear this song or whatever. Little, just little things to screw with his head. Where's my shirt? I can't find my trunks, whatever. Because he said, I, he said he wanted him to get accustomed to dealing with little things that don't really affect your performance, but they can screw with your head mentally and make and affect your performance in that way. So that's the first thing I think is great about training around your kids, uh, your wife, you know, your husband, wh whoever your significant other is who may not be into that. Um, it, it prepares you for the, for the weird stuff that happens on, on competition day. And then, yeah. and, and then the other thing is that, by doing the stuff you described, like you said, that that lady owns a farm, she's building some of that, you know, they call it like farmer strength or whatever. So you're building core strength, your ligaments and tendons are getting time un under tension in a different way. And I think that can only be beneficial to power lifters so that when they come back to actually training the, the big three lifts and improving their skill and technique again with those lifts, now they've got a different kind of 
strength to draw upon if that makes sense mm -hmm. yeah you become way more well-rounded and to, to touch on what you said before too so uh, for a long time one of the reasons i didn't get nice bars or nice equipment or nice yeah. whatever was because i felt like i was at an advantage at a competition because everything was so much nicer than what i was used oh. to dealing with and so when i have a lot of new lifters who jump right in and say i, I can't can't squat today unless I have a squat bar. I can't deadlift mm. today unless I have a deadlift bar. Those things put you at a disadvantage because if um, if you're in a position where you don't have the perfect item, you completely lose your performance. And your performance should not be hinged on those things, especially when you're an elite lifter. Um, there's there's studies out there that that show that um, you know an an inter or a intermediate or a beginner lifter. Uh, can perform on certain conditions, under certain conditions, but an advanced or elite lifter should be able to perform under all conditions. And that's what makes them elite is because they are able to surpass those barriers. Um, or like even without a warm up to be able to go hit a max effort deadlift with very little um, warm up versus uh, someone who's newer might say, I need to feel the weight, you know, I need to feel all, the, all this, this increments before I can hit this number. That's all in your head. Your body can do it yeah. if you're sufficient be warm and you can move through the range of motion there technically isn't a reason for you to to do all these ramp sets right those ramp sets are just for you to mentally prepare if you don't have that um practice under your belt over years and years and years right, right? that's an excellent point i've never actually heard anybody say it just that way about why you can go um and immediately hit so think about it all right if you were at um say you work in a factory and they tell mm -hmm. you to, hey, we got to move these boxes, right? And the box is very, very heavy. Are you going to go do warm-up sets? No, you're just going to pick up the box and move it. And yet, when we are in a, and that's with an awkward implement mm -hmm. that's not actually balanced to be, you know, intended to be lifted by a human being. And yet, when we go into the gym, we feel like we need a gazillion warm-up sets before we touch the actual working weight when you should be able to go I don't know, 50%, 75% go or something like that, you yeah. know, just roughly something like that. Um, have you, speaking of newer and beginner lifters, have you picked up any new clients uh, as a result of the fact that you're offering home workouts and giving people some guidance? Um, I haven't. So the home workouts that I did, uh, I modified the home workouts for my current clients with based on the equipment that they had. But for the most part, I just gave out that that template, and um, I have I have not picked up any any new clients at all. I haven't been even looking to pick up new clients. My uh, my roster has been full for a while just because of school and everything, and I do have the extra time now. But I just worry that if I pick up too many people during this time, if we do end up going back to school, if I do end up going back okay. to doing my thesis project and all that stuff. Um, I don't want to neglect people. So what I'm doing is I'm trying to focus my time right now on my current clients, maybe give them the extra attention that they didn't get uh, during the beginning of the semester and um, try to kind of see where they're at, how they're feeling, make sure make sure to kind of connect with them because team powerlifting, we are kind of like a family. So I want to make sure that, you know, their jobs are okay, their families are okay, that um, they're still able to be mentally in a good place and kind of worry about the new clients uh, later. The new clients will, will always come. It'll always be there um, as long as we can, you know, still uh, support the people who are, who've been loyal to us for this long. That's kind of where my focus is at, so. Okay, so yeah, let me uh, pop up some of your clients here. So there's, there's Kathy doing a deadlift. You've got a, a fair number of uh, highly skilled. I, I've, I've actually met some of your clients at, at different meets. There's Kathy, oh, yeah. yeah, and let's see, uh, Valeria, who is amazingly strong. Yeah, she's uh yeah. she's in the army, I believe, right? And so uh yeah, so she's strong. So she's hitting the army physical fitness standards and doing quite well on the platform. She's just a monster. She's just she's been uh dieting down um since she had a little mini she did a CrossFit competition too. Oh wow, and, okay. And um She's, she gets apprehensive when she tells me about her copper, uh, co CrossFit competition. She's like, don't be mad at me, coach, but this is what I'm doing. I'm like, fine, I'll write you a CrossFit like, taper so you can yeah. peak at that time. Um, but 
she does all sorts of things and she's been dieting down now so she lost like i don't know 20 pounds and she's still hitting crazy numbers hitting prs and i'm just like is this ever gonna slow down yeah. because like, she's just insane this is crazy um, yeah she's she's great i cannot I, I in fact i refuse to not show autumn even if we're not talking about specifically clients anymore autumn is so amazing mama lives to eat on instagram She's so cool. Uh, I'm showing a before and after picture of her, right? From when she first started to now. Because you see her, uh, she's got the gun show going on. And and you actually, uh, her husband, I don't have a picture of this, but her husband actually did a challenge along with you guys too. Did, she, did he not? Yeah, so every year I host a transformation challenge with A Team Athletics, and it started five years ago. So this year was our fifth year, and so um, we opened it up to everybody. And so Autumn had her husband come in and do the challenge. And you know, we have a private group chat for my moderating team, and um, she was complaining about her husband the whole time. Oh my gosh, he's losing all this weight, and I have to compete <laughs> against him, and all this stuff. And you know how her personality. Oh is, yeah, but, yeah. Um, I was just like, I'm, I'm excited to see his transformation. And he stuck to his numbers. Yeah, he, did. he did incredibly well. He had been biking up until up until now. And so he bikes to and from work. That's his exercise oh, nice. every day. So I'm excited to kind of get him into the gym and see if we can continue to work on that body comp while he continues to diet down. Because he's been he stuck to it. So, so let's uh, transition to the fact that you are actually, I mentioned that you are a referee and we know you're a professor. You've got a couple of things that I feel may have also been affected by this uh, quarantine, one of which uh, intersects with us. You're a meat promoter, and we were scheduled to live stream your powerlifting meet, the Drug Test of Georgia Open, next month in Columbus. But then that got pushed back because of, obviously, the quarantine. So um, this actually, I, t I typically don't do any meat promotion. Steve Goggins was the one who, as a favor to me, he brought the competition down to Columbus because okay. I needed local lifters in order to do my training study. Right. And so this is a way for us to get people who could uh, participate who are nationally qualified uh, and, and to kind of recruit. And so the study was put on the back burner. I told my uh, my advising department I would I would do the study but i wanted to take longer to do it okay. because i didn't think it would be enough time um to start and end it in the time frame that we had this is more like a year-long study just so i can get enough nationally qualified competitors in and do the training and everything so um it did it did affect us because the with the quarantine we can't have people training in uh, in person okay and so i was concurrently doing a different um protocol for my for my thesis and um so that has been put on hold as well but i feel kind of lucky after seeing the fallout for all the like phd students who've been doing training studies for like six years oh, yeah. who are all of their data who have to start completely from scratch uh who can't get i, I mean i don't know what's going to happen are people just not going to get their degrees are people going to have to wait another six years are the are the um schools going to modify how they give out this has been i've never seen anything like this before i've never had uh, i've never heard of a situation where people have been quarantined like this i don't know if you have uh but uh, yeah it's it's very new and it's kind of scary to, to think that because for us, the protocol we're going through as instructors is we have to trans um, we have to change everything to online learning. And so for me, that comes second nature because I do everything online. I'm comfortable teaching physical activity over the Internet. Uh, but for people who need to uh, complete their in-person data collection, how is that going to work? Right. So. Um, that has been put on hold. As for the meat, you know, we're all uh, we're all having to deal with the fallout from not being able to, you know, USPA was trying to stand strong and and not um, not cancel their competitions because the lifters have worked so hard. But I think we all realize the importance of quarantine, the importance of pe you know people's lives over you know something that we do for fun. So I think it's a good call for us to stay home at home. The competitions will always be there, and we'll you know we'll just come into the competition stronger but for now we just have to keep our keep our eyes on what's important and that's the safety of you know even if we're you know younger and we're resilient i have parents i 
that I don't want to to spread a disease to possibly and you know I have people I care about I have you know there's faculty there's instructors there's a lot of people who are uh, very important to the community who might be at risk and we need yeah. to be careful not to spread uh, anything to them so um, I think I think it's okay I was disappointed at first but uh, I, and I think we all are disappointed but um, I think the outcome will be better just from um, you know staying in on lockdowns the good thing is in the meantime because especially because we're home gym owners we've got some resources I think uh, that can help us and you actually have one of those resources that you sent me Let's see if I can pull it up here you were on a podcast the uh, this is future of female powerlifting podcast uh, mm -hmm. so we have podcasts like that way so that we can still learn uh, still grow our brains but then you've also got a competition that you're doing right now am i correct it's a mock powerlifting meet yes yeah, so uh we decided to host an online powerlifting meet and so this is going to be um the same similar to how you would do a regular competition except that what we're doing is we have a few our weight classes are going to be a little bit different it's women's only um and we're doing an open and a master's category uh -huh. so um under 40 and then 40 and over okay. and we're doing subcategories by weight and then i'm also allowing people to do one list competition so that could be squat or bench or deadlift typically we only have either bench only competitions or deadlift only competitions I opened it up to squat as well because you know why not also have um, a single lift event like that and so we can uh, we can have up to 40 winners in all the different categories that we have and we're gonna have two um, two winners so one uh, overall winner in the open category and one overall winner in the masters category and we're hoping to get a good prize pot together with a hundred dollar gift card maybe uh, supplements shirts depending on what sponsorships we can rile up so that's actually going on now okay. we have a few people who are already signed up and it's going to go all the way through uh, the end of the month so the 31st and you have up to three times to submit your videos in for grading and we'll, we're going to have referees check out the, okay. the videos and um, and kind of pick up pick our winners. So all right. Yeah, I was gonna post on uh, I'm gonna post that on Instagram as well Let people know that they can uh, on my Instagram feed let people know that they can get into it and how they can uh, reach out to you and In fact, I'm gonna go ahead and I'll offer one of our garage and life banners We'll, we'll offer that as a uh, part of the prize package for the winners Because um, I, I really think that things like this uh, are a great way to motivate people if they are training at home because like I said, I've been doing this since 2000 so I know that there are ebbs and flows there are times when I'm wasn't motivated to train and the only thing that kept me going is the fact that I had signed up for me um, mm -hmm. and, you know and so it's a um, it's a it's a big deal I think this is an important thing you're doing so as we wrap up though go ahead and let people know how they can get in touch with you how they can um, number one reach out to you if they like those uh, home workouts Again, we'll put links in the description of everything you're telling them and then also how they can get involved with this online powerlifting meet. So everything can be accessed through teampowerlifting.com. So T-E-A-M powerlifting.com. Uh, we have all of our events there. We have um, all of our sponsors links in there. Um, Rep Fitness's link is through there. The, you can sign up for the meet right through there. The registration is through the website. Everything is streamlined. And um, if you guys want to get the any of the templates, we have a powerlifting template on there. We have a home gym. If you don't have powerlifting equipment and you you still want to lift or um, do resistance training workouts you can still get the home gym workout uh, we have you know bodybuilding templates we have all sorts of things on the website so you could just go to the shop section and you can go ahead and purchase and then we'll give your viewers um, maybe a code we can kind of talk about what you want that code to sure. be and then we can we can have them get all that stuff for a little bit of a discount so hey, I got the code right now it's on my, it's on my hoodie best gym in town Best gym in town. Yeah. Okay. Yes. It's a little long. You want something shorter? Okay, we'll come up with something. <laughs> we'll come up with something shorter. I love my. I love that other thing. Best gym in town. But anyway. Yeah. But yeah, I really yeah. appreciate you taking the time to talk to us. Um, is there anything that you want to say to our viewers before uh, we get out of here? Don't panic. Just take it easy. Enjoy your time. Make the most of it, and keep lifting. You know. Awesome. 
Well, Mel, it was a pleasure talking to you. I appreciate everybody who checked this out. Please, if you like this video, you enjoyed it, share it with your friends, subscribe, hit the bell so you get notifications.